We'll start with a short meditation. Sit five point posture or posture that you feel comfortable in. So bring your attention inward. Be aware of the stillness in your body. When you are aware of the stillness in your body, the mind which is not still, it helps to be still, it helps to calm and connect. When you lose the awareness of the stillness in your body, That stillness of the body no longer supports the minds to be calm. So clearly be connected to that stillness, not lose the connection to that stillness. If when you do be aware you're, you're lost or you're losing, reconnect and continue. Now gradually listen to the silence, feel the silence, connect with that silence. When you're hearing it, when you're connecting with it, it helps the mind to be quiet. When you lose the connection to that silence, the silence stop supporting your mind to be quiet. Therefore, continue, maintain connection to that silence.
feel the rest in that silence. Feel a deep sense of peace in that silence. Now be aware of the spaciousness of your heart, your mind. Like a clear sky in the desert. Be aware, maintain that awareness it helps your mind to recognize the openness it helps the mind to open when you lose the awareness of that spaciousness it stops helping so continuously be aware of the spaciousness of your mind, rest in that openness. Be aware of unbounded space within oneself. Be aware of the being present in that unbounded space. Be aware of the warmth in that union of space and awareness. you're aware of that space just feeling completely open like a boundless sky that unbounded space is the Dharmakaya that present and awareness is the Sambhogakaya that warmth and bliss in that union is the Nirmanakaya realize the three kaya its presence right now 
in you this moment. Feel the blessing. We are blessed. Be aware of all the people around the world that who are meditating this moment with us. We are all connected to each other and we are supporting each other this moment in our practice. Be aware of that. You are not alone in this process, in this meditation. You are connected, you are supported. Feel that. Just for once again, for a moment, be aware of this experience of space, sacred space. Be aware of this experience of light, the awareness. Be aware of this experience of warmth and this bliss. The inner refuge. Now, gradually trying to bring into a conscious, into awareness, a blockages in your body or pain in your body or particular sickness in your body or illness in your body. Wherever you have, or wherever you feel you need the healing in your body, gradually journey toward the direction in that body, like in your heart. Go right in the center of the heart, your sense of your heart. or wherever that location might be. And be aware of that space, a sacred space, unconditional space, the space which allows, the space which moves, the speech which gives the birth to healing, the space which allows the change. Just feel that sense of sacred space right in that center of that pain or block, or if it's an emotion or fear, such as fear, right? Go in the center of that fear and feel gradually feel a presence of that space in that fear. The more you feel space, the less you will be feeling fear. The more you feel the space, the less you will be feeling the pain. Feel the space in the center of that pain, that location, that emotion. Continue.
feel as you are aware of the space just feel the power of that space its healing opening that blockages that pain healing that sickness Now gradually bring the sense of present and awareness, the quality of the second refuge, a presence of light, a presence of awareness, right in the center of that block, of that pain, that disease. presence of your awareness it's like presence of light the awareness is light when presence of awareness is there that vibration that wind of that awareness it's like a light pervading through those area and healing with the, that light Let's continue third refuge or the third medicine a quality and experience of warmth awareness of warmth and gradually bring this awareness of warmth in the center of that area in that illness or in that fear, emotion, whatever you are trying to heal, bring right in the center of that the touch of that warmth, that wind 
it's healing, unblocking, clearing. Trust that. Bring the awareness of the warm right in the center of there. Continue. Yes, all together, feel the space, feel the presence of light, of awareness, feel the presence of warmth, of the bliss, all three, a medicine in the center of that location, that illness, that pain, and feel the healing is happening. Okay. <coughs> so one like uh, and this this sense of uh, uh, when when one enters into the nature of mind experiencing that sacred space uh, and experiencing that light, the awareness and experiencing that warmth is it possible that this experience can be uh, how you say, uh, transmitted to something or, or it, to bring somewhere else you know like this is the attitude uh, when this practice is what we're trying to do 
is first we are trying to uh, calm down our mind for a few steps uh, by connecting with the stillness of the body, silence of the speech, spaciousness of the mind. We are trying to calm down our mind. Uh, through calming down our mind, we are trying to connect with the inner refuge, that trikaya, that space, that awareness and that warmth. Once we feel the connection to that or connection strong enough, then we are trying to bring that experience of space to area of the body. So it's like a kind of, in a way, like a bringing somewhere, right? That you're trying to bring somewhere that experience. Or, or you're trying to not bring somewhere, you're trying to discover that quality somewhere. So I mean, that's kind of, you know, it's like a, um, it's like a very much like our personal experiences. In, in a way, you don't bring anywhere anything. You know, it's always there, right? So some sense, in a progress, in a progression, we feel like we are bringing somewhere, something somewhere. We are feeling ch something is changing from some one position to another position. In essence, somehow, it's always there, always the same. That to realize that is the realization. So, but anyway, the point here is this: the sense of bringing there, I think, um, it's okay to have. Uh, if that's how making more sense or uh, it's like a more like a journeying your consciousness journeying in the, that location in your body where the pain is, where the illness is, where the blockages are, right going right in the center of that, your consciousness going right in the center of that and then once you feel your presence there and then there you're, dis you're trying to discover the same thing what you discovered before. You're trying to experience the space. And when you're trying to experience the space, so the so basically awareness of the space, then there is wind of that awareness. Awareness of that awareness, then there is a wind of that awareness. Awareness of the warmth or the bliss, then there is a wind of that bliss of the warmth. So these three winds, a wind of space, the wind of awareness, the wind of warmth, have more stronger uh, power to heal or change something. Because the wind is, is much more stronger. When, we, when people say something like, I, I feel it, I energetically I feel it, rather than mind, it's a state of awareness. It's not just a state of awareness, it's much more, much more, a movement oriented. It's more wind, so basically it's more energy. So, so in this process, this is what's happening. You are going there and you're trying to discover the nature of that place or nature of the observer, which is nothing more than the just pure space. So moment you discover that sense of pure space, then there is a wind with it. There's basically some sense of movement are there in that awareness that those awareness and that wind together is shifting some energy there. So idea of healing those areas is that awareness and that wind is shifting something there. You're feeling more and more and more open. Now we can think about what kind of things are opening you know, we can think about like actual physical blockages. We can think about more like energetic blockages in which in which the wind plays important role, or more like a mental, psychological, emotional blockages in which the awareness plays more important role. So these awareness, these wind playing role to unblock those things. When, when some things unblock, you know, it releases a lot of things. It releases maybe um, the disease itself. It releases what makes that disease. It releases, in a way, you can believe also a, like a possessor of, possessor, what we call nedak. Nedak means a possessor of that disease. So somehow, uh, you know, if you go to that direction, then there is a spirit or there is um, 
uh, a being, entity, whatever, is there is something uh, kind of holding it together. So when when deep sense of identity is released, which is causing those problems, there might be some kind of a spirit also release because of releasing of that identity. And then, you know, sometimes people say, oh, I dreamt about like image of snake going out or image of some another being leaving that location or image of bleeding, for example. So they, they say images like that. They say when, when you dream something like bleeding something, they say your disease is leaving. When you dream something like a spirit, some beings are leaving those places. The possessor of the disease is leaving. Or here in this case, just maybe you're feeling some energy is relieving, re releasing or something, or you're feeling some sense of more space. So basically, the core power or the center of this practice is the core power is the, related, the wind which is related with that space, the wind which is related with that awareness, the wind which is related with that warmth. And when you are, when the awareness is there, these three qualities are present. So that's what the actually uh, he, the way the healing is taking place. Then one, one can also look, you know, uh, in, if you look at, uh, for example, every whatever you're working on, if you're working on particular uh, illness or particular blockages or particular uh, emotion, if you look at it closely, uh, see where does where does this emotion is coming from? Where does this blockage is coming from? Uh, it just does not come like in, in like like that. It just not, did not happen like yesterday night or this morning during the breakfast or something like that. You know, uh, it it has been there uh, some period of time accumulating it. So you have to see what what causing it. That makes sense. So just for a moment, again, once again, sit, sit comfortably. Just for a moment, once again, let go of all the thoughts. All the experiences, let go. Simply rest. Not even trying to rest. Be aware of that restfulness in this moment in you. Now gradually bring your attention to that location where you are feel some illness, some
some blockages, some pain. Bring the awareness of sacred space <coughs> the inner refuge so the more you are aware of that space in that location feeling that wind, that energy, clearing blockages with that awareness of the sacred space. Allow to clear, allow to open. By simply bringing the awareness of that sacred space in that location. same way bring your awareness presence of that awareness in that location that awareness is light there is a wind related to that awareness moment it's there it's activating its presence is there it's healing the light is healing, that awareness is healing. Allow that. Finally, the awareness of the warmth, awareness of the bliss, the experience of that warmth, bring right in the center of that illness, that block. Just being aware of that space, light and warmth in that location.
one last exercise. Just imagine and feel that you are giving a spacious, luminous, warm hug to that area or your heart which is in pain or part of body which is ill. You are giving a spacious, luminous, a warm hug. You're connecting or you're touching or you're holding, you're hugging in that way. Just imagine, imagine a parent who is desperate to help ch child who is not well need a lot of help. A parent can look at the child, child face, where you see a lot of need, but if you look at the child face with that desperateness, with that sadness, with that helplessness, with that sense of blocked. Just imagine how does the child feel seeing this, this eye looking at you with this helplessness. Not good. Or imagine a child who is, the parents is not looking at the child, but parents are being with the child, but the same intense energy. They're sitting next to, with this sense of hopelessness, sense of lost, sense of deep sadness, you can imagine that will not help and heal the child. Now imagine totally opposite. Child is in need, same way, but the parents are very strong, very open, very connected, a lot of warmth and love to the child. <coughs> And the ch parents is looking at the child, and child is looking at the parents with that intense connection of openness, with so much hope, so much confidence, so much connection, so much loving, warm quality. A child is experiencing that gaze of the parent's eye in the children's body and through the children's eye. Imagine say also the same way these parents are being with the child. This child have that kind of parents. What child is feeling? Feeling supported, feeling hope, feeling loved, feeling healing. So the, your illness is like that child. Your blockages are like that child. Your inner fear is like that child. And you have to be good, strong parent. Only way to be a good, strong parent is to have a confidence of that space, confidence of that awareness, confidence of that warmth. That's what we pray. May I have the confidence of three refugees then only I can heal my child. Then only I can heal my illness.
in these practices the approach of giving a hug spacious luminous warm hug it's like a gaze of the parents to the children discovering that space light and warmth in that location it's like a parent sitting being with the child both are right both are okay as long as that quality is there in being and that quality is there in transmitting or gazing or relating or connecting and those quality are which heals so for a moment of reflection if you reflect your particularly specific things in your own cases either it's illness or blockages or deep fear isolation loneliness whatever it is just reflect your own case how long you have been accumulating it since when you started it at least since when you started that your conscious of it that you started since when these things begin to affect not only mental but energetic and physical manifestation of those problems such as illness such as separation with somebody or from somebody just for a moment be aware how it started it also simply it started because lack of space there is no question that it started lack of space there is no question it started lack of awareness and connection there is no question it has started because of lack of that warmth but do you recognize in your own specific cases reflect that what kind of space was lacking space to exist space to be different space for change you did not have those kind of spaces we want it to be always same not changing when change happens you cannot process you're stuck disappointed as a result you disconnect isolate separate retrieve creating a deep sense of sadness as a result there is no warmth in that case how long you have been living with sense of sadness absence of warmth warmth of being a warmth of discovering new things a warmth and joy of doing a warmth of warmth and joy of no curiosity of for new things warmth and joy for every aspect of life 
in the present and in the future how long you have been living a week or absence of those forms and do you have feel because of that some of the things what's happening now are caused by that if you recognize that whatever these illness blockages pain in the body in emotions it was given birth because of lack of that space awareness and warmth it was able to continuously exist because of la- lack of that space awareness and warmth now it can be healed because the presence of space awareness and the warmth but one might feel a little challenge to know what all these things means but at least you have some clue so we one can pray saying may i understand this profound body of knowledge in a simple way may i have blessing to apply this profound body of knowledge in my own life for greater transformation a single medicine a single medicine for countless diseases the awareness the light in a light So uh, maybe we can uh, leave a little time for some questions. For here in our audience here or in Cyber Sangha. <laughs> <laughs> so I um everybody probably knows that uh, we are here at Serenity Ridge. Uh, retreat center for lignitia in virginia um we are in doing our spring retreat here with a wonderful group of people and so i'll open up some questions here and over there how's going it's going fine we have people from uh, europe uh, russia Okay. Very quiet. Very quiet, okay. That's good. So the question is can the warrior seat syllable uh which like for example like a a om hum which is re- representing the space awareness and and the warmth reciting those uh during the practice in those location will this 
this vibration of the sound will, will it increase more, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, but also it depends, you know, like uh, I think um, those you are very familiar with the, the, the state of experiences of awareness and then also familiar with the, with the mantra, I think uh, absolutely yes. But if you are not familiar, but if you are fighting with the mantras, probably not. You know, people are not familiar with mantras and then trying to, you know, struggling, so then that it might interfere, but otherwise, yes. Okay, just pick some some of the questions. Yeah. Um, one person asked, uh, if one has a disease that is not in any particular place in the body, where do you focus your attention? But how you know it's there? No, if it is a blood disease or maybe even... So in, it's in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in some sense, wherever, you know, wherever sense, like, a, basically, if you say, I have something in my body, that at least you know it's in your body. That's the location. You know, location can be uh, very, very small, like a kind of particle, or location can be very, very big in a collective. A collective whole family could be one, you know, trying to heal a collective family pain. So that is a location. You know, you can, it's a very, it's in a sense of group. So I, in, in these cases, what we are trying to do is we are more like really working with a physical uh, uh, pain or illness or something like that but and in the principle of way we work with this is the same you know like if you you, you clearly know that for example in, in in relationship with somebody um where you feel the need to uh, uh to become closer to somebody or closer with somebody and you feel there is a some sense of uh uh disconnectedness with somebody. So if you look at it clearly, what does that mean? First of all, there are reasons why you are not close to somebody is you're close. You're close. You're not open. You're not open maybe the way this person talks. You're not open the way this person does things. You're not open. Whatever, whatever reason, you're not open to that person. So number one, you have to be open. What does the openness, openness does? It allows you to connect. Awareness means the connection. It, you, it allows you to connect. Once you connect, then you feel the warmth. You cannot expect to feel the warmth in disconnectedness. And maybe you, some of you might be trying to do that. You say, where, where is the warmth? I don't know. I don't feel the warmth. Of course, you're not going to feel the warmth if, if not connected. So, so this, this, this quality, either it's in one person, it's a group, globally, location, it's from very simple, has a little place to big place. So you can, you can think about whole body, like, you know, that's what usually we do, right? That some sense when we feel like without, when we're not, when we're not doing uh, attention to a specific location, we're trying to bring attention to the old body. Yeah. Yes. Um, someone has asked a question that you actually answered, I think, earlier today, but maybe you can elaborate. Uh, I felt the spot of pain moving, so I followed it. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. So yes, uh, the question is uh, uh, experiencing the spot of pain moving. Or so, so some sense of uh, something is moving. So I think uh, it's completely okay. So if you uh, you allow it to move in that space, you allow uh, you connect with that uh, movement. You bring the warmth in that movement. It, it might, you know, as we said this morning, that if you're opening, trying to open your heart, you feel like it's moving through your throat chakra. Or so some sense maybe that sense of the opening heart, opening your speech. So that, you know, that sense of flow, you can allow that if, they, if any word comes out or you can say, uh, I, that sense of movement coming through my hand, I feel like a little bit of movement in my hand, it's okay to allow those movements. Yes, you can, you can allow that and, um, 
uh, just continuously bring that sense of awareness and uh, awareness and warmth in that those movements. Yeah. Okay. Anybody in, in our group here? You don't have to be serious here. No? <laughs> Sure. So, um, this uh, sh- uh, a wonderful experience in one of the audience here. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it, as we spoke a little bit this morning, you know, like the 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 image of Ishiwamo in the meditation, image of Ishiwamo coming and helping to heal image of this presence of somebody leaving. I think these are, it's a very human thing. You know, we are, you know, we are, we feel somebody's presence exists, we feel somebody's bothering you, we feel somebody loves you, we feel somebody likes you. This presence of each other is a very human thing to feel, right? So I think, um, um, and clearly, uh, when uh, when there is uh, blockages, there, there is this possibility uh, some sense of spirit, some sense of um, entity, or some sense of energy, or some sense of your own pr- projection, your maybe even the sense of you, like identity, your identity, who is actually, I mean, in essence, that's what it is. Even though we, even though we might think, oh, it's Ishiwamo, it's somebody who's present there, uh, in essence, probably that's what it is, you know, that when when disease is there, when some problems are there, blockage is there, it's not really somebody else. We think it's somebody else. You can call it somebody else. We can agree it's somebody else. We can say this is how it looks, collective vision of that person. We can do all those things, but it's in the deep inside, it's your own identity which has created that. You know, because there is sense of I who is projecting the world, creating the world it wants to create, and it also creates the, what the kind of illness it wanted to create. So when that sense of I is released from there, you might feel demon is gone, you might feel some person is gone, you might feel your spirit is gone, you can call it many things, but in the end, that identity has gone. We call Dang Zing, like a de- demon of self-grasping demon. Right, that demon is gone, but it appears it appears looks like a like long teeth, long hair. I don't know, you know, <laughs> whichever image are images that you are used to. Like how how does demon supposed to look? You know, if you live in a idea of UFO, then you might it looks like a UFO. If you I don't know, if you are living in a forest, then the bugs in the forest, or if you live in desert, the bug looks like something in the desert. It can look many different ways. In the end some sense of you are being freed. So it frees that area of body of you. Yeah, so, yes, question? Question, okay. Is it possible to use these methods to help other people in our work, in our relationships? 
So the question is, is it possible to help other people with this method? Any healing practice can help other people. Any compassion can help other people. Any kindness can help other people. You know, yes, absolutely. But first, it's important to learn to help yourself because the idea, you know, idea of like a be calming one's mind from wandering, idea of discovering those three qualities inside, idea of able to that it's not only like a frozen and sitting here. You know, that's what it is. You know, like sometimes when when for example openness, even the idea of helping somebody, that sometimes we feel like that. We when you feel very open, then you feel like uh, that openness just not does not just stay openness. Openness has some actions related with this openness. You know, I, I, I wanted to help. I wanted to be a service. So, because that's what openness is. Because it, openness is able to let go of sense of self, which is very narrow located, <laughs> and it's it's opening toward others. So, so that degree of openness, are we genuinely there? And sometimes it's not even trying to help. You're already helping. You know, I mean, for example, in our life it could be that, as we said, ripening my own being, may I benefit others in the prayer. Ripening my own self, may I benefit others. It's very much true. When you feel that kind of ripening quality in you, whoever you are talking to, whoever you are with, whoever you are doing something with, whoever even you are looking at somebody, somebody's eye or something like that, or whoever, wherever you are present with somebody, I think you are impacting regardless. Because we are always in a relationship with somebody anyway. We are always, you know, we, we, right now I am talking, you are listening. We are in, inter, interacting with each other. When, if that sense of space is there, awareness is there, warmth is there, we are, we are affecting each other already without even trying to affect each other. But when, we, when that sense of genuine sense of openness is not there, that then the wanting to help becomes like a medical profession, you know, like, you know, like, so then sometime, sometime like, uh, I don't know, like all these companies, you know, deep inside you, you truly don't know if they really, really wanted to help or they wanted to help with the condition of making money. You know, so that it's, it's very different. In a genuine sense of help will be some point you have to let go of the self. I mean, I think that's, that's where the really healing is coming. This is the, even in the, even in the practices itself, when we say, when, when you really feel that sense of space, who you are, it just changes. The way you, the way you feel yourself is changes. Uh, some sense of selflessness is there in order to heal, heal a sense of self. So, so yes, uh, you know, I mean, to make it short, yes, but I know sometimes the, this question of wanting to help other people, it, it, sometimes it gets complicated when people when ask their question because they wanted to immediately, you know, like having half experience or half understanding, they're saying, okay, I'm going to help you, just sit right in front of you. I'm doing these three refugees and getting your pain away or something like that. Those, those way, no. Yes. Yes, absolutely, you know. So the question is, can somebody else hold uh, one person if one person is not able to be in the inner refuge? Exactly, the child. The example of the child is the good example. Child is lost, child is sad, child is uh, needing parents. So what kind of parent is there? That's the more question, right? So the parent, parent is there, that parent, parent is like that that space, the parent is that awareness, the parent is that warmth, that space means that confidence, that awareness means that 
a genuine connection, that warmth means that loving kindness is there. That parents, if, you know, holding the child, looking at the child, being next to the child, is impacting the child. Because that, we know that, you know, we, we don't have to be a child. I mean, we can be adults. We can have a nec- one another adult with next to us who, have, who is holding those qualities. We feel immediately supported by that. They're just looking at you, you feel supported. They're just holding your hand, you feel supported. They're just sitting next to you quiet, you feel supported. But, on the other hand, if you look at their face, you can see they, they have more fear than you have. And they are supposed to be helping you. And they're looking again, okay, I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you, you know. Do you think you're going to help? You say, no, no, please, please, please just go away, you know. Leave me alone here. Because you know they're not helping you. It's making you feel worse. So yes, you can hold somebody. And that I think is a beautiful, that's the, I mean, that's exactly what you're trying to do with yourself. Because in a way, your illness is some sense of yourself, that pain is some, some aspect of yourself, the block is some aspect of yourself, that fear is one aspect of yourself, that loneliness is one aspect of yourself. So you are bigger, bigger awareness of who you are is helping this, some aspect of yourself who needs that support. That's what we're trying to do in the practice, no? Yeah. Yes. So, can abiding in the space can prevent or, or illness or harm? Harm? Yeah. Yeah. Abiding in the space, it doesn't harm. And can it prevent illness and can it prevent harm? Yeah, abs- absolutely. It can prevent and uh, it can uh, help the heal. Heal, absolutely, yeah. Uh, um, it's like, a, for example, the example is in the if this, this is the space here, like this is the spacious awareness, this is the spacious awareness, and I'm, 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 doing, I'm drawing something here, like it's, I just did, and what do you see here? What do you see? Did I leave any trace in this space? No, it's free. It doesn't leave any traces. When, when it doesn't leave any traces, you're free from the karma. You're free from the consequences of action. For us, most of the time, we don't write in the space, we write in the blackboard. It stays there. It's like that's how our accumulation of karma is. Every time any experiences happens, it stays there. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, we can have a beautiful experience. And so that was a great day. When we can do next? Now you're suffering. You know, the great experience makes you suffer in the future. You know, one day it was a great experience. Now it will be, I don't know how many days it will make you suffer. More days it will make you suffer than, you know, one day of fun. That's how we, because of the traces that we leave. If you don't leave traces, a fun is just a fun. Joy is just a joy. Action is just an action which arises there, appears there, stays there, dissolves there, it finishes there, nothing more. Free, you're free. You're free from good experience, you're free from the bad experience. So a space doesn't allow you to affect as much. I mean, that's why in, in the practice of the dream yoga, when we talk, you know, talk uh, awareness, when you, they, when you cultivate more awareness and even the action what happens, let's say you are in that space and you are, you're fully in that space, you're connected, you feel the warmth and somebody comes right in front of you and says something not nice. Then when, since you are in that so beautiful place, you look, you don't, you don't hear it very well, you know, like what that bad thing is. Or you maybe hear it doesn't bother you at all because the space you are in. It's okay that even even your way you are, 
did not allow that person to affect what the person said. In contrary, you might be in the bad space, blocked, fearful, isolation. And then somebody says, good morning, how are you? You look at the person. <laughs> and somebody's just saying, good morning, why do you have to look that way? Because they interfere, interrupt your sitting on a rotten karma cushion. <laughs> Okay, last one. Last one. Okay, two more. Yeah, that's one more and one, one here. Yeah. Uh, in a situation where you are uh, filled with very strong pain, how is it possible to manage it? Very strong pain. So, the question is when it's very strong, like physical pain, probably, and how it's possible to manage? There is no pain which you, know, which you cannot manage. In the, in the experiences of inner refuge? No. So, uh, of course, it might be, uh, it depends very much on individual to individual of your experiences, you know. And I gave one time, I gave example of, you know, when I, uh, how you say, I dislocated my arm, arm, shoulder, shoulder, how you say, shoulder, right, shoulder, and uh, go, go into the hospital and they said, uh, if you have to, you wait for an hour, that uh, anest person will give the anesthesia to, to fix it back, all you want, you can do it right now. I, s I thought, okay, this is a great opportunity, you know. <laughs> this, this is the right place to experience. I said, no way, I don't want anybody to wait anybody, do it right here. So, of course, I, I just went into the inner refuge. And if I said I don't feel pain at all, I'm lying. But it was so easy, it was so easy, so easy. So, and and before, when I, when I, before I went to the hospital, before they did me anything, it was painful. I don't know any, how many of you have that experience. It's, it's quite a pain. But absolutely, I think there is no such a pain cannot be hosted in that space. That, that you have to trust. When you say, this pain, I don't think so. <laughs> I know you will say that, I know somebody might be saying that in the audience, but just for the sake of fun, you can say, this pain, it looks like it might not be possible, but maybe it is possible. Start with that thought and try to host in the inner refuge and tell me afterward. Okay? Okay, the last one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the all the retreats and all the time dedication, but the practice. Thank you. Yeah. So I think um, um, so. Maybe I'll just say a few words and then we finish. Is that for for example the sense of space, this moment, because of the technology, 
we have we are holding a different kind of space we have uh, i don't know how many countries people from different countries we are holding in some sense of cyber space I, we we are calling cyber sangha right we are cyber sacred sangha so there's a space in which many many people all of us we are held in that space so any time when uh, there's 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 this huge unbounded space but we are it's each individually we are trying to open whatever we need to, to open in our own life little life that we have trying to open toward that unbounded space and every time we open we have a great surprises it's like a gift it says oh i'm open i'm open to what i can and feel free i'm open to what i can let go of that thing i'm open to what i can let go of this thing you the sense of able to let go of things it's a, such a great joy great joy because we hold on things in our life all the time we hold on things even the pain we hold on even the disease we hold on whatever we hold on we when we don't have a space we hold on whenever we feel space it opens up another dimension it gives clearly it gives another space for existing another space to do things another another space for services even different scale of service different you know opens up different boundary of services for helping others and experiencing yourself of course helping other is just a manifestation the most fun part is you feel that aspect in yourself that's the more fun part as a result you do a lot of things because you do what you do from that space that's all but experiencing that space in yourself is much more fun and when you do something good for other is fun for others but that space is always brings you in a different level i think i think that is that is every retreat what we do in a way like every retreat or different every year that's we hope that every year we do that we feel a, a new space open us in ourselves a new a sense of i me or new sense of you you discover in yourself and hope that sense of self is more confident more fearless more a uh, high self uh, infinite sense of possibility potentiality is there and at the same time it's free it's free so that sense of freedom i think it's a, it's a beautiful here okay thank you into that dedication yeah we can do the both